check also the trip time to ensure that it trips at the time which is required for that particular second protected device to trip. Your washing Makoke Enterprises. Today we are going to be discussing on inspection and testing. A reference to GCS 2014 section 21 part 23. We are there with your code book. Go to section 21, part 23 of QCS 2014. The table of content. We have the first part, which is general. Move to the set. The, the, under general, we have inspection and test at manufacturer's place. Inspection and test at site. Electrical installation testing. Move to general, and then we have series of tests that will be carried out after installation works have been carried out on site. Electrical equipment and testing, general, and then we move to commissioning. The first part, which is inspection and test at manufacturer's place. So if we go through the first point, which is the engineer shall be authorized to, in to inspect examine and test at any reasonable time and in the premises of the manufacturer, the quality of the material used for the equipment to be supplied. These work inspections shall include, but not limited to the following equipment, lighting, fixtures, emergency power equipment, switch gears, switch boards, etc. So we have different appliances or different equipments that will be carried out inspection in the manufacturer's place. So before we bring any material or probably um, this set of materials which are mentioned in KCS 2014, we'll have to ensure that we carry out factory acceptance tests. So we'll call it factory acceptance test or the fact which will be carried out in the manufacturer's place. The next will be 22, 23.1.2, which is inspection and test at site. So this test will be carried out once the material have been approved from the manufacturer's place. we we'll bring the material to site. we we'll carry out an inspection on that material. And then we carry out the installation. We carry out inspection for the installation of that material. And then we now carry out inspection for the material that is installed on site, which is in operation. In this case, now we'll be carrying out testing and then we ensure that it, it functions based on the design intent. This is what we call the SAT, which is the site acceptance test. Point number one, the specification defines the test to be made on electrical equipment, distribution systems, and installation at site to establish compliance with the specification and to ensure that you ensure they are entirely suitable for the intended purpose. Point number two, I think the first part which we explained already, the point number two, for all tests, a minimum of 30 days notice in writing shall be given by the contractor to the engineer to enable the test to be witnessed. So we inform the contract, the contractor will inform the engineer in charge, who is the consultant in this in this place. So you, you inform the consultant 30 days prior to the test to be carried out on site so that they will um, put on all the different formalities in order to witness the, the work on site. The electrical point number three, the electric, all electrical tests, unless otherwise specified, shall be made either in manner in a manner prescribed in the relevant first part A, which is a British standard, B, which is a IEEE regulation, which is a latest edition, 
Qatar General Electricity and Water Corporation, QGEWC regulation, Civil Defense Department regulation, and then all where no standard slash code regulation exists in a manner approved, in a manner approved by the engineer. We move now to 23.2, which is electrical installation testing. Point number one, on completion of the electrical installation work or any separate or distinct part thereof, notify the engineer in writing that a complete part of the electrical work is ready for inspection and testing. Before doing so, perform initial trial test. Test correct, adjust, balance, regulate, etc. The section concerned as necessary until required conditions are obtained. So in this case, once an electrical works have been carried out on site, we ensure that we, we put in a, a, an inspection request which will be submitted to the consultant so that they will come on site to check the work that is being done on site. Then up before, before doing that, we have to perform a pre-inspection, which will be done by the contractor inspector. They will carry out the inspection on site, ensure that it's okay, raise the inspection, submit to the consultant, then the consultant will come to witness and then to give or to pass the final judgment, which will be either approved or probably um, not approved. The results, point number two, the results and readings obtained for the test shall be equal or better than the requirements of the IEEE or the IEEE and the Qatar General Electricity and Water Corporation regulations. And this shall be recorded on forms similar to the ones described in the IEEE regulation. The test shall be carried out in a manner as described in these regulations. So all this part on the electrical installation testing, the general part aspect of it is just um, giving a concern that we should be able or probably after carrying out electrical installation works on site, we need to ensure that we raise an inspection and before raising an inspection, we do pre-inspection, which will be done by the contractor on site. Once it's ready, then we submit an inspection to the consultant for them to come for to witness that ins installation that is done on site. So we have series of tests that will be carried out after installation works have been done on site. I might give an example of, uh, say we carry out installation of um, electrical distribution boards, sub-main distribution boards, low voltage, low voltage panels, medium voltage panels, or probably electric motors that are installed on site. In this case, we, we have series of tests that we are going to perform, which is um, laid down by the code, which is QCS 2014. So I uh, will list down all the different tests, then we see exactly how these different tests are being carried out. 23.2.1, verification of polarity. Ver ver verification of polarity shall be made to ensure that all fuses and single pole control devices are connected only on the live phase conductor. It's very important. The neutral must not be connected through any of these devices. So this is to let us or make us understand that when you go to any panel board, while you're carrying out or performing the polarity inspection, we have to ensure that all the different phase conductors that are installed or glanded to that panel board should be the only conductors that are connected to the the, 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 the fuses or probably the circuit breakers. And then also for the polarity test, we have to ensure that we have um, the different phase conductors. In Qatar, we're talking of 
are YB faces, which is a red, a blue, and the yellow faces. So all these faces should be connected in accordance as per the design panel that have been installed on site. We move to 23.2.3, which is at electrode test. At electrode test will be carried out to ensure that we have a value which is less than or equal to one ohm of a resistance. Um, if you go to QCS 2014, section 21 part 22 this will give you a guide i've made a video on that as well so it's, it's going to give you the guide on how to carry out the test the different the values that we should have and it will give you also what are the things to note while carrying out this test or probably when you're preparing a method statement for um at electrode resistance testing you know exactly how to prepare the method statement Point number one, upon installation of an electrode, tests shall be carried out to ensure that the installation of electrode has reduced the earth fault impedance effectively to the required value. This, in this case now, we, 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 we will understand here that if we have a value of the earth electrode resistance, which is less than one, it will be able to, will be able to have an at for loop impedance value that will be satisfactory enough to generate an amount of current that would trip our uh, RCDs or circuit protected devices. The second point, resistance of earth of all earthing rods, each earth terminal network, continuity of conductors, and all bends and joints shall be tested by means of the Werner test. The electrode resistance shall not exceed one ohm requirement or, or as specified by the Qatar General Electricity and Water Corporation regulation. Move to the next test, 23.2.1, which is insulation resistance test. So for the first test, which is the earth electro test, I'll take it to a graphic. Okay, we'll get a rundown and then at the end of it, I'll take you to graphic where we have all the different Insulation resistant test, point E or point number one. Insulation resistant test shall be carried out before a completed installation is permanently connected to this supply. Large installation may be divided into groups. A DC voltage not less than twice a normal supply voltage, RMS value of AC supply voltage or AC system voltage shall be applied for the measurement of the installation resistance for low voltage installation where apparatus apparatus voltage rating does not exceed 55 volt shall be tested by applying 500 volt DC only. Okay, the code says a DC voltage not less than twice the normal voltage, the normal supply voltage. So in this case, if in case our panel board is going to be supplied with um, 240 volts or 220 volts or 240 volts, in this case, when selecting the range on our uh, uh, mega tester, what we'll do is we'll have to ensure that the value is not less than twice the supply voltage or a normal supply voltage. So if we multiply, if we take a 240 multiplied by two, we are going to have 480 volts. So in this case now, we are going to select a 500 volt DC on our, me on more, on our mega tester to carry out this test. This is the reason why we have this selection range. And then if in case we have our panel board, which is um, a 400 and 
15 volts AC supply that heats on our panel board. In this case, we are going to take a 415 multiplied by two, and then we'll have to select now 1000 volts DC that will be injected. That, in this case now, we, we, I, we, we, I want us to understand that while carrying out this test, we have to ensure that trained personals are carrying out this test. Because this amount of voltage, like I did mention, 500 volt DC or 1000 volt DC, this amount of voltage will be the voltage that will be supplied or injected in that circuit. So it's, it suffices that a trained personnel carry out this test. Ring circuit continuity. For ring circuit continuity tests, it will be carried out in the case that where, where we have a um, series of um, um, sockets that are connected in a circuit in a ring manner. It could either be radial or ring. So we have continuity that should be uh, carried out for either ring or radial circuit. For radial circuit, we know it, go, it just goes from one end and then the other end now goes to the DB. So we connect all our loads and then it goes to the DB. In that case, now we go just on the DB and then carry out our continuity test. To carry out the continuity test, we have to use our um, multi methods to carry out this test. So we'll go to the se selection range, we'll go to uh, continuity, use the two props. we we'll go now either, if in case the supply is um, a single phase where we have phase neutral and edge, in this case, we have to connect both ends, either um, the phase and the neutral, and then we shot the other end to we'll carry out the test. We we'll move to phase and edge. We shot the other end of the phase and edge, and then we carry out the test to ensure that we have continuity for our cable or our wires. For the case of the ring, for a ring circuit, in this case, we are talking of the ring circuit continuity. So in this case, we have double supplies that will be heating on the panel board or on the distribution board. So in this case, we will now short one end and then test the other end. If we are shorting the phase and the neutral, we have to test the phase and the neutral on the other on the, on the other side. If we are shorting the phase and the head, we have to short the other end, the phase and the head, and then we carry out the test to ensure that we have continuity for the cable or for the wires. The test shall be carried out to verify the continuity of all conductors, including the F continuity conductor of every ring circuit and all readings shall be tabulated. Phase rotation, 23.2.6, which is a phase rotation. Phase rotation here will be carried out by, by using a phase rotation tester. Mostly we use a multifunctional tester to carry out this test where we will have to select on phase rotation. And then we have uh, three props that will be connected to our phase, our three different phases, RYB, red, blue, and the yellow uh, phases. So we connect it there press the test button, and then ensure that it is moving on a clockwise. In this case, we'll be talking of um, the analog type or the digital type. For the analog type, it will be rotating. Either in a, it should be rotating in a clockwise direction to ensure that we have our phase rotation is okay. And um, it, 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 it moves from one phase to another by a phase shift of 120 degrees. And then for the case of digital, um, tester, we'll be having one, two, three, that'll be displaying on the screen. Or probably we have some LED lights, which will be showing um, phase one, phase two, phase three, and then all the different lights will be turning on, respectively. The complete installation shall be tested to ensure that all distribution boards are connected to give correct phase rotation for the corresponding apparatus as required. So mostly this uh, phase rotation test will be carried out mostly on um, SMDBs or sub main distribution boards, or probably MCCs or um, motor control panels. So to ensure that we will not have a, any failure on our electric motors while they are operating. So we carry out this test to ensure that we have a correct phase rotation prior to energizing the panels and functioning of the different equipment such as electric motors.
23.2.7, continuity of protective conductor. In this case, this uh, we might still call them air protective conductors. Uh, we will have to do all our bonding after the etting system has been carried out. We're taking our conductor from the pit, bring it to the head bar. From the head bar, we connect to all the different equipments that need to be added. After connecting that, we now bond all the different um, outgoing feeders that are connected to the panel alongside with the main um, cable that is leaving from either the, the low voltage panel board coming to the sub main distribution board. We have to bond all of the cables all of the wire, all of the, all of the, the, the glands that have been uh, terminated on the panel board, we burn all of them and then we carry out the add continuity test or the con uh, continuity of protective conductor to ensure that we have continuity and to, to, to give us that guarantee or the full guarantee that if during the event of an effort we'll have this amount of current that will be generated, we'll move to the ground with ease without any problem. A test shall be carried out to verify that all protective conductors are connected correctly, are electrically sound and electrically sound before power supply is connected to an installation. Twenty-three point two point eight. We have add for loop impedance. Each completed installation shall be tested for effectiveness of the earthing by means of an earth fault loop impedance test. The test shall be carried out by using earth fault earth loop impedance test instrument. So this test will be carried out after all the installation works have been done. We we'll carry out this test using an earth fault and earth loop impedance tester, or probably we use um a multifunctional tester where we have different options. So we go to the selector range and then we select the add for loop test. So we select from there, we carry out the test. So basically this test will, is conducted in two different parts. We have it at the, uh, the supply side and then at the load side. But the loads at supply side we call ZE, which is the external add for loop impedance. And then at the load side we call ZS. So we carry out this test to ensure that we have a satisfactory value. Then we note it down in our test sheet, and then we proceed with the next inspection or the next test that needs to be carried out. For the F4 loop impedance at the external part, which is at the DB side, this at the external part, I should put it that way. In this case, we will have to refer to the acting arrangement. Why on the on the, 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 the ZS part, which we, we, when we carry out this test, we have to refer to the different um, ratings of the circuit breakers. So for example, if we talk of 16 amp circuit breaker or MCB, we have different values of our ZS, which is a minimum or no, no, is the maximum values. So if we have anything which is greater than our value will not be acceptable. All these values have been structured in such a way that if we have anything which is less than this value, it will generate a value of current during the event of an air fault, which will be able to trip our circuit protective devices. It's very important. Then 3.2.9, which is operation tests. This clause, applies to release interlocks and any other protective and control device, residual current devices to ensure correct functioning. So we carry out operation tests to ensure that all these different um, equipments are operating perfectly well. For example, if we are talking of the residual current devices or probably the RCBOs, we have to pre perform these different tests after performing the 23.2.8, which is the add for loop impedance test, we now have to perform um, a prospective fault current to ensure that these uh, um, protective devices are all operating perfectly well. And also we'll have to check also the trip time to ensure that it trips at the time which is required for that particular circuit protective device to trip. Twenty-three point three. 
which is electrical equipment testing. Point number one, the contractor shall fully test and commission the whole of electrical installation in accordance to or with the general Qatar General Electricity and Water Corporation and the IEEE regulation as per requirement of the project documentation and as outlined in this section. So we have series of equipments that needs to be tested, which is mentioned by the code, which is QCS 2014. So we have um, MCCs, main cables, motors, starters, and control gears, right up to the diesel generator. So all these different appliances, which is not limited to this, will be tested and commissioned. Point number three, following functional tests shall be carried out to ensure proper functioning of the plant and all apparatus. 23.4, commissioning. So we move to the general aspect of it. Commissioning actually is um, to verify that we our system will operate to or will operate to the to the, the design intent. So after carrying out the different tests, we'll have to make sure that we carry out commissioning for the entire or for the different systems that we've carried out for the different tests that we leveled above to ensure that all these different equipment, they function as per a design intent, which is very important. So this video is um, focused on QCS 2014, section 21, part 23, which is, which is to give you an insight on inspection and testing, and then also to guide us and to let us understand the different procedures to carry out the different inspection and how to carry out the testing while we are carrying out installation works at site, which is very important and then also to follow all the different requirements as per the code. The code says we have to carry out this test. We must ensure that we carry out all the tests before we proceed with commissioning of the said system, which is very important. You're watching Makoga Enterprises.